Alrighty, next we're going to move on and I'm going to talk about Factory Talk View, the design environment. Version 10 is the latest version that's out. A um, lot of uh, new features and enhancements for uh, both development and runtime for you. We'll, uh, we'll touch on a few of them here. Uh, first and foremost, scalability. In the past, an application, an SE application, only supported 50 clients. Uh, they've expanded that up now. You see here, 80 thick clients, thin manager clients, and 50 viewpoint clients. In the past, those were combined. That combined limit was 50. So now it's a total of 130 uh, client applications. So you can see now that uh, it supports, I mean, a much larger application from a single point. It's more tightly integrated with Thin Manager. Uh, for those of you that use Thin Manager, there's a Thin Manager login, and then if I've got this SE application running underneath it, typically you have the login for the SE application. Now they've integrated it in where it passes through that Thin Man Manager login directly into the SE client, so you have a single point of login. In the trending chart, they've added the ability to create and save ad hoc trending reports. If you've ever used the Factory Talk uh, Vantage Point product, one of the features of it is this ad hoc trending tool that allows you to just grab anything, create it, save it, and then access it, you know, at another time or let anyone else access it now. That's been built into version 10 of the View SE product too. So now you can create these um, custom reports or custom trends, save them, someone else could access them, you can access, access them on another client or whatever. Multi-monitor framework. In the past, if you had a multi-monitor application, which a lot of people do, Rockwell required you to have two client licenses. Or if you didn't want to do that, they had a way you could resize your application across the resolution of the multi-monitors, a lot of hoops you had to go through to make it work across multi-monitors. Now they've made that simple and allow you to just configure up to six individual monitors uh, within the, the client file configuration. Uh, you see that's the, the screen right there that you go through. You define how you lay them out there. But I use one CLI file, I use one client license, and I can now have six separate monitors. I can move displays between them and all that kind of good stuff. Legacy LHMI alarming. Version 10 is going to be the last version of HMI that supports uh, the old HMI alarming structure. Everything's moving towards the factory talk alarms and events, either the instructions or now the tag base is really where they want you to go. It'll pop up a warning message that, hey, you know, this is going away, it's still supported, but we recommend you convert it. Uh, there is a conversion utility in the development software to convert those alarms over, but just want to make you aware that uh, Rockwell's moving away from that, uh, that form factor. Version 10 also well, introduces factory talk links. Basically, it's the rebranding of RS Links Enterprise and RS Links Gateway. Um, finally, pulling them into the fold of the, the factory talk name is what that amounts to. Uh, RS Links Enterprise will be known as factory talk links and factory, factory talk gateway. Uh, just gets that links added in there. So, to make that clear to you, nothing new you have to do or buy, it's all there. The new Factory Talk Links as well includes the OPC UA connector. This is basically the next generation of the OPC connector out there. Probably a lot of third party software packages you may or may not have encountered already use it. Uh, like I said, it's, it's the next generation. Rockwell's finally embraced it and included it here. There's nothing additional for you to buy. You get it when you uh, upgrade it to the latest uh, service platform. And then the last SE feature. Uh, providing a redundant controller path configuration in the shortcut. Single shortcut, two paths, they're running together, but it's only communicating via one. But obviously the benefit is, you know, if you have some network issue or something like that, you'll still have your communication to your controller there. Fast switch over time, so it minimizes that impact uh, on your HMI should something happen to your network there. Over on the ME side, for those of you that have had to migrate legacy projects to newer versions, basically 32-bit to 64-bit, 
Um, you've had to maintain that 32-bit OS computer, or you've called Jeff or myself and asked us to do that conversion for you. Well, with version 10 now, that's done natively within the development software itself. So it will take care of that conversion uh, on a 64-bit box. So you don't have to maintain that 32-bit OS or a computer or try to find it if you can find one. Neat little small feature here that they've added in finally. Usually when there's an issue with a Panview terminal, the first question is always, what version is it? Got to go run back, dig through the system information, noodle around and find it. Well now they put it up top right there on the menu bar at the top. So all you got to do is look at the front startup screen there and voila, you have that piece of information. Onboard audit information. Uh, the panel view is not supported in the patch and regulated uh, industries out there, uh, regulatory compliance and things like that. Panel view has not supported being able to provide that uh, audit trail information. Uh, it now does that. Uh, it stores up to 10,000 items on there. Uh, it's got an audit trail list that you can look at and then a detailed uh, drill down list that you can access that information as well. Does, does not require asset center. It's all in embedded in the terminal itself. So you can now use terminals in uh, regulated applications. And finally, exporting alarms, alarm history and the audit history to a CSV file. In the past, you know, Rockwell's had their proprietary uh, file format for the data, sort of got to go through some hoops to get that data out of there into an Excel. So they have embedded that natively into the application now so you can export it directly to a CSV file to easily access it.